Hi everybody. You're going to have to just bear with me here for a minute. I am going to bring on my girl for the Happy Healthy Living Spotlight in a series. Hold on one second. Let me just get my phone to where it needs to be. Hope everybody's doing well today. Um, I've got this fancy little thing that my husband worked, helped me with. And I'm trying to make sure. Let's see. I think I'm going to try. I can't record this way. Okay, I'm going to finish this and then I'll come back because I've got to try to invite. Hold on. Your viewer, Joanna. Hi, girl. Um, as soon as I should be able to find her. Um, there she is. All right, Miss Kim is here. I am going to, hey Renee, I'm going to invite on Miss Kim Hunt. Let me just screw this in. It's live, folks. We are live. Um, I'm going to introduce, there we go. Now we're stable. Bring Kim. Little Miss Kim, you can't hear me. That would be helpful if I put these on. <laughs> there we oh, go. I can hear you there now. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I can. Fabulous. Oh, I have to Fabulous. turn my volume down. You can my turn your volume like, down a little bit. A little bit. I can hear an echo in mine. Am I sideways for you? You are sideways for me. Yes. Have you turned your phone sideways? I did. You did? But okay. But I tried turning it back up. There we go. There we go. Oh, but well, I don't you're have a here. I am. <laughs> so I hope I don't wiggle too much because I don't have um you don't have a, a little tripod stand? that goes that way. Okay. Well, I do, but it, it's a vertical oh. one. I mean, I Well, you can put it way. sideways. That's what I do with mine is I put it sideways on mine just in case. Um, well, let me, while you're figuring that out, let me just introduce everybody and say hi yeah. and um, welcome to the Healthy Happy Living Spotlight Series. I'm so excited to do this um, and share with you guys and just want to give you a little bit of a background as to why we are doing this. Um, so I've been doing a lot of professional networking. In the last two and a half years, I have learned what it means to be a professional a professional networker. I certainly have not gotten my 10,000 hours in, but I'm, I've been doing a lot of meeting of people that own other businesses and um, in my neighborhood, in my neck of the woods, and then also all over the country. And really, I was so amazed at what I learned. Like there were things that I was like, what? You can do what? And it just blew my mind and it was something that I just felt so passionate about sharing with the people that I love, that I know, or that are in my community and that I don't know and I don't love yet, <laughs> but that are here. And so what I did is I created an event last year called the Frisco Wellness Fair in order to showcase some of these friends that I've met that have, um, uh, you know, either products or services that are more holistic minded that can really assist people in living a healthy, happy lifestyle. And one of my very first people that I connected with was Kim. And we actually went, both of us went to this, um, this event that was called non-toxic something, non-toxic living or something like that. And I honestly had no idea what I was getting into and she kind of didn't either. And um, she presented what she does at this event and I was just, I was blown away. Um, she did some things that really made my eyes bug out and go, oh my gosh. And it just provided solutions for me that I didn't even know really that I needed. Um, so without further ado, I want to introduce Kim Hunt. And she is what I have deemed to be the chemical eradicator. Um, and she <laughs> is just a wonderful person with a beautiful heart of service and gratitude. And she has spent a lot of her time serving other people and showing people a different way of um, 
cleaning up their houses really, but really has always shown me and demonstrated to me what um, a servant heart means. Um, I've really all, I've always enjoyed partnering with her. She and I partnered together on this series that we did for a while um, where we were trying to introduce kind of something like what we're doing now, but in person and educate people on other ways of living and um, ways that you can get chemicals out of your house and ways you can detoxify and ways you can do various things. And we really got a lot out of that. I think we just didn't have as many people as we would right. like to come to that event. <laughs> So, yeah. or a place, or, a good place, right? Or was, a good place to do it. Yeah. So, we're going to utilize our beautiful social media networks and um, the internet to do something similar here. So, Kim, I would like for you to start by telling us where you grew up. We're just going to do a couple of rapid fire questions, and I want to get to know you better in front of everybody else. So, okay. where did you grow so up? I grew, I grew up in Illinois, Peoria, Illinois, Central Illinois, farmland. And I, as soon as I graduated from Illinois State University, I moved to Texas because this chick does not like cold weather oh. and I didn't want to shovel another driveway yeah. or look at all that black yucky snow on the ground for months at a time. Yeah. So I moved to Texas and I've been here ever, since 1986. Oh my goodness. Well, that's so I've wonderful. Been here longer. I'm not, yeah. So I'm a transplanted Yankee, according okay. to my husband. <laughs> he doesn't call me a Yankee anymore. Have you always <laughs> lived in the North Texas area? Yes. Okay. We well, we lived in um, Cedar Hill and Desoto. Okay. That area, That's and still then when our kids, yeah, still North Texas. Yeah. yeah. So, and then we moved to Frisco. So we've been in Frisco since '99. Oh, cool. In the Frisco area. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny. My dad used to work in Frisco for Home Interiors and Gifts, and this was before Frisco turned into the metropolis that it is now. And there was literally 121 was a two-way street with one flashing yeah. light, and mm -hmm. I remember coming back to Texas after being gone for a while and thinking there is never a way that I'm going to end up in Frisco. Never. <laughs> I had no idea what yeah. it was going to become, of course, but we've really enjoyed living here too. So you, okay. So you live here in Frisco now and you've been here mm -hmm. for a while. Tell us a little bit more about that. So, well, we lived on the, on the east side of Frisco for quite a while while our kids were being uh, were in school because we didn't want them having to hop from one school to the next mm -hmm. with all the school zones and stuff changing which yeah. that still happened and my kids still went to several schools but we stayed on the east side so they were with their friends okay. and then when they left the house we thought we want we want a smaller home so we moved into a Del Webb community off of, in West Frisco okay so we live as far west Frisco as you can get off of 423 in Stonebrook now oh so that's a beautiful area it. though it is real close to the lake. Yeah, yeah, it is real pretty. So we enjoy it. We enjoy Frisco. We enjoy the area. We enjoy being close to everything. The people are just so sweet. And I still have a lot of relationships from my all my years in teaching. Right. Um, just I know a lot of people in the community. So it's fun. That's great. Which I can only imagine that right now you're probably glad you're not in the school system. I, my, my heart goes out to all of the schools, all of the parents, the teachers, the prince, everybody that works in the schools. Oh my goodness. And all the, the, the um, parents that are having to try and work and then try and homeschool their kids. It is really, it's been, been, been um, I mean, struggles bring us, struggles help us grow as people mm -hmm. and we become stronger and better. So there's lots of great things that are coming out of this that I think we need to focus on. I but think you're right. My heart goes out to them. And my prayers go out to them. Yeah. Well, yes. we're almost done. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we're almost done. I've had it really easy because my kids are older. And so they pretty much do what they need to do. And all I need to do is check in on them. But, oof, man, it is, it is an interesting time to have kids in school. Yes, it um, is. Okay. So what would you say is one of your superpowers? So I, I would probably say education. I think God's gifted us with different gifts, and I love teaching. And so after 29 years, I just knew that I knew that I knew that I was done in the public education system, but yeah. I still wanted to teach. But God just placed a passion in me to help people get healthier. Hmm. And that's what I decided to do, and that's why I'm doing what I do now. I want to see people get healthier, and there's we don't we can't do better if we don't know better. Right. So just I really am all about raising awareness and educating. Love that. So I, I can still use my superpower 
even though I'm not in the public classroom. Anymore. Oh yeah. And you do it so well, guys, I've seen her in action and she does it so well. You're just so passionate about what you do. And that really comes across yeah. when you are yeah. sharing what you know with other folks. Um, okay. So what is one thing that you found that you love about this particular special time? We're going to call it special time. Oh, it's lives. actually hard to find one thing. I, I, I love the fact that our environment is cleaning up, yeah. that our sky is bluer that just everything seems more vivid and vibrant. But my husband works in downtown Dallas. So oh. I really have loved the idea that he has been able to stay home and not spend two or three hours on the road driving back and forth. Yeah. And of course, all the gas and tolls that he saves right. is a plus. <laughs> right, right. We yeah, have definitely so. found a cost savings for sure. And we don't have to drive all that far. But right. um, yeah. well, I don't have to drive anywhere, but Bill does, you know, my husband does. So. Um, well, that's, that's great. That's great. I've enjoyed having him home and he has, um, adopted my lifestyle of plant-based eating. Good for him. He's trying it out. And so it makes it a lot easier when he's not at the office right. or going out to eat with the guys or whatever. So, right. you know, I, I just provide him plant-based meals. That temptation is not there, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, okay. So what is your, what is your one, like, all-time favorite accomplishments so far in your life? I would have to say my 29 years of teaching as a public educator. Mm. I, I, you know, I'm sewing into the life of all of those kids and teachers because my last 18, 17 or 18 years, I can't remember, were um, I was a, um, a help or a support to the teachers mm -hmm. digitally, helping them um, create content that they could use in their classroom. You know, our kids are digital natives, so right. I really help them um, find or create lessons and whatnot that the kids would be excited about. You know, they're not paper pencil right. or chalkboard people like we were when right. we went to school. Right. Right. So um, that's what I did. But I, I just love educating and sewing into the lives of the kids and, and parents and just everybody that, that uh, I met along the way. Yeah. Digital natives. It. I've never heard that before. I think I like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's well, true. Well, you know, our kids, we, 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 yeah, we didn't, we didn't have iPads when we were growing up. I mean, that's all they know is digital. It's true. Right. It's true. Mm -hmm. I, I think my family, my kids would probably love to be more digital natives than we've allowed them to be, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> I think there needs to be a nice balance. Yeah. I think as we grew up, I spent so much of my time outside playing. Like yeah. that's what we did. Right. We didn't really watch TV. We didn't have computers. We didn't have, you know, that was back in the dark ages, according to my kids. Like, right. You didn't have computers. Right. Yeah. We had a TV that you had to get up and change the channel. We didn't have a remote. Yeah. Like, we were the channel changers. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting, especially right now, I was talking to a friend of mine this past weekend about what would it have looked like if we in, in our day and age did not have, you know, were quarantined. Oh, it probably would have been crazy because we couldn't go outside and play with our friends, you know? Right. And so, right. and, and so being, being creative with your time and, and your space inside the house or in your backyard or in your front yard, whatever, mm -hmm. Um, right. you know, it makes, it makes for an interesting conversation at the very least. Um, okay. So what do you, why, no, not what, but why do you strive to be the best chemical eradicator there is? Okay. So I told you about my passion for helping people get healthier. I would say it started all about six or seven years before I retired. Okay. I just noticed how unhealthy our kids were. We had kids, more and more kids every year were being diagnosed with autism, ADD, ADHD, learning, but they had learning tr trouble. Um, we had kids that were emotionally and behaviorally just n not okay. I had, um, one, I served two campuses and one of my last years we had two third graders that had cancer. Oh. So I mean these diseases and these problems that were affecting, that you would think would affect, you know, older people, diabetes, heart disease, they were affecting our kids in elementary school. Right. And so I often had conversations with my coworkers about what what's going on why are our kids having so much trouble yeah. and so I, I just then started learning started my my health search I guess or my um, just trying to learn what can we do to help our kids and our families get healthier yeah. and I knew when I retired that I was going to do something about that now I thought it was going to be the nutrition round right but that really wasn't my my passion as much I just knew I needed to keep working. I needed to do, I wanted to keep teaching. Mm -hmm. And so I saw a Norex presentation about a um, month after I retired. And I'm a little um, 
OCD. Not not too bad anymore. Like I've kind of worked through some of that. Good for you. But sometimes I can't work in my home unless I like mop my floor. Like I have to have a clean home. I can't focus if I don't. But I'm a little germaphobe too. So when I saw a Norwex presentation, I thought, what? I can clean with microfiber and water and and remove up to 99% of bacteria with water? What? Right. And I just got so excited about that. I had to share with everybody because I was raised with in a bleach family. Yeah. My mom bleached everything and I when my when I got married, I did the same thing. Sure. Kind of generationally clean, That's right? That's what you we learn. Kind of, we learn. And so my husband had such a reaction, oh. but little did I know that bleach is a is um, really linked to all kinds of respiratory issues mm. and all kinds of like eyes, nose, throat, lung um, irritants, but it's also um, linked to like allergic reactions mm. and um, uh, and other things, uh, migraines, headaches, things like that. So I didn't know all of that. I just knew that my husband said, stop using bleach. I can't breathe in my own home. My eyes burn. I just can't. Yeah. So I stopped and I almost grieved. I did. I grieved because I thought my house isn't going to be clean. Right. But that's what I was raised right. to think. Right. right. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad to be able to share this information with people because people, they, they don't know what they don't know. Right. And when you raise awareness to, for them and show them a, a safer way to clean, it doesn't involve all those ammonia, chlor, you know, all the, the bleach, the, the volatile organic compounds that they put in these cleaners. Um, they, yeah, I mean, that, there's just no better, no better thing for me than just to educate people. And that's my focus. That's my focus great. is always education. It's not, um, I don't feel like I'm a salesperson whatsoever. Right. My first goal is to, to serve and educate people. Right. And if I've done that, then that's a win. Well, you right? have succeeded because I know that there, there are a lot of folks out there that have a much safer, cleaner home because of you and, so, and your efforts. So I know that you are succeeding yeah. at that. That's for sure. Um, okay. Well, talking about success, can you tell us two success stories that, you know, with a disclaimer, maybe that, you know, not every situation is the same, but is there, are there two success stories that you'd like to share with us? Oh, yes, I have so many. Okay. So one of my, one of my favorite ones, it was a gentleman that I met at a, um, uh, one of my Norwex demos mm -hmm. and he suffered from COPD. He, he was just not a, um, real healthy mm -hmm. person and he, um, he bought some products. And he said, you know, he had a little um, Alzheimer's or dementia, like where mm. he just had trouble remembering. And he said, can you come show me how to use this? So I do. I love to serve people. I went to his home and I showed him how to use the products. But when I walked, when he opened that door and I walked through that, over that threshold, my eyes started stinging. Oh, wow. My nose started stinging. I couldn't, I had trouble breathing and I'm not an asthmatic, but I had trouble breathing. And I said, okay, he said, what do I need to do? And I said, the first thing, we need to get rid of all these cleaners, the plug-ins, the, all the things oh, that yeah, those the are chemicals horrible. in them. Yes. And, he, and I said, that's why you're having so much, such a hard time breathing in your own home. And he said, okay. He got rid of all of that. I showed him how to use all, all of his new products. Well, just a handful, right? You can clean most of your home, your home with like three different things. Right, right. And so I showed him how to use those products. And I went back to do another um, service call with him uh, to deliver something, I think. He wanted to try something else. Mm -hmm. And I walked in his house and I could breathe. Like I didn't have that same, um, the same thing didn't happen to me. My wow. eyes didn't sting. I could breathe in his home. And he just looked at me and he said, thank you. Oh. I can breathe in my own home. I feel so much better. Like there was nothing better than that, yeah. right? When you make an impact in someone's health yeah. and you totally turn their health around. Like that just, that, that was, that was huge for me. I love that. I love that. I know that um, feeling. So that was a success story. Yeah. And then um, there's so many to, to choose from. I had one lady that called me and her husband works from home. Well, now so many of us work from home. Right. This, was a, this was about three years ago. And he suffered from migraines terribly, mm. several migraines a month. When they started turn, switching their, their home, his life back, when you decrease, well, I mean, migraines are debilitating. Oh yeah. You can't hardly function when you have a migraine. Absolutely. And so that, that I get, I get success stories like that all the time. That's amazing. I absolutely love making a difference in the lives of people. And Norwex isn't, doesn't just make a healthier home. It makes a home that is more sustainable. I know there, I've had people in my neighborhood frantic because they can't find paper towels yes. or napkins or cleaners or wipes and all of that. 
we use sustainable products, so we are so much safer for the environment as well. Right. I love that we have a two-fold mission at Norwex to radically re reduce chemicals mm -hmm. and to make our environment a better safer place yes. for the generations to come. Yes. So I know I love my cloths and, and my cloths have been so, and my mop and everything that, you know, everything that I have that I use to clean the house because I've been personally wanting to remove these chemicals for a long time as well. Mm -hmm. So it was just so valuable to me to, to get a, my hands on a couple of things. Um, that's awesome. Okay. So now, because we learn from our failures, Yes. Do you have a failure that you want to share with us? Well, I do have failures, you know, trying to do this whole um, operate online and mm. do Facebook parties and Zoom and that kind of thing. You know, I've had some, yeah. some flops, quite a few, yeah. <laughs> but I learned from them and I've, be, I've been able to uh, um, improve my online, um, my online activities and stuff. I have a ways to go and I still am trying to learn every day. Yeah. But um, I would say that would be one of them. And a failure really with a business, and I wouldn't say it's a failure because I'm all about planting seeds. Yeah. But when, it, when somebody tells me like, you know, I show them what the products can do and they said, you know, I trust what you're saying. I know those products can do what they do, but I just can't give up my bleach or I just can't give up yeah. whatever. And I know it's a, it's a paradigm shift for a lot of people. But that is, a, and I don't know that I would say that's a failure because a lot of times people need to hear something six to eight times before they really have a grasp on it and change their their habit or change what they're doing. Sure. And so I know that I'm just one of those seeds being planted, right. so I wouldn't call that a failure. Yeah, but I would Sometimes either. I'm thinking, oh, because I so desperately want people to to get these chemicals out of their home. Right. Right. And when we yes, mm -hmm. when we want. Also, it, you know, when we personally have an experience that is so positive and changes our lives so positively, you know, it's natural to want to share that with other folks. I mean, right. it's just the same as if we go to a great movie or we have a great purchase at a sale that's fantastic or we go to a great restaurant when, when we have those positive things that happen in our lives, we want to share it. So, yeah, oh, yeah I definitely, definitely, that's kind of a, a success clouded over a failure. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So lastly, my question is for you, my dear, is how can people find you? It, you know, uh, what, what can they do to when they're ready to hear the education that you have? Where can they go and find you? Oh, so I have, I do have a Facebook page and you can find me um, at Kim Safe Cleaning Solutions. Great. At Kim Safe Cleaning Solutions. So that's my Facebook page. And then off of that page, I have a private group just for my customers. So if you don't already have a Norwex rep and you would like me to serve you and, and help educate you, I would be honored to have you join that group. But you can click on that and just request to be added. That's awesome. I just want to make sure that people that request are not already a customer because I'm not into taking someone else's sure, customer. Sure, sure. I want to educate people that don't have customer, don't have a consultant already. Okay. So the other question that I have for you then, because this is this is going to hit a wide range and and an audience that may not be in Frisco, Texas. So yeah. is is it possible for people all over the country or anywhere else yeah. to get in oh, touch yes. with you? So all over the country, I really, uh, I can't um, sell. I can certainly educate overseas, but I can't sell okay. anything to people overseas, okay. but unless they're in an army base. Okay. So I can, we can ship to um, um, APOs, I think they're yeah, called. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. But um, anywhere in the United States, I have customers all over because I do some online um, demos and stuff. Um, I just had one the other day that was so fun, and there were people from other states, one from South Carolina. That's I can't so great. Where. But it's fun because, yeah, um, I can really impact more people by um, going online, right. which is what this coronavirus has, has done. It's kind of forced us all to operate online. It right? sure has. And so there's been a lot of blessings that have come out of that. Because well, I'm like an in-home party kind of girl. I want to see people knee to knee, face to face. Right. I love that. Right. And I get a lot of energy from just being around people. Sure. But I've really enjoyed using, um, doing online, online too and getting to know people that I, otherwise I would never have met. Well, I tell you what, guys, if you, uh, if you want to see a really interesting presentation of these products, you need to watch one of Kim's because <laughs> there's a part in it, and I won't spoil it, but there's a part in it, if you still do it, that I was like, 
Uh, I actually have a video for that that I made. Do yeah. you? Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because if you're doing that all the time, but yeah. um, uh, it's a, it's, it's a, it's worth, it's worth it to go see that yeah. video and yeah. see what she does and how, you know, knowing that she's, you know, got OCD behaviors as well and likes to have mm -hmm. clean uh, things around her to see yeah. this part of her presentation, just what, for what it's yeah. worth. Go watch the presentation. Well, yeah. Kim, I cannot thank you enough for, first of all, being my friend. Second of oh. all, being uh, gracious enough to be my first for this Healthy Happy Living series. And I certainly hope that for anyone who, who is watching live or anyone who is watching this playback that you have gained some value from this and you've learned a little bit about Kim and her personality and who she is and um, can reach out to her for those healthy solutions for cleaning your house. Um, believe me, it's worth it. It's worth oh, it right now. Stephanie. So thank you so much for inviting me. Absolutely. I have enjoyed being on here with you. And I was just humbled when you asked me to be um, one of the one of your guests. You're my so thank you. You're my very first. So thank I you. appreciate it. But everybody has such a wonderful day. Enjoy the weekend. And if you have any questions, um, Kim, maybe after we finish this, you can go on to my page and drop your Facebook link into the sure. comments below so that if anybody wants to get in touch with you, they know exactly where to do it. Oh, I'll do that. Awesome. Thanks. Awesome. You okay. guys have a, have great, a great day. Great Thank day, you Stephanie. so much, Kim. Okay. We'll talk to you later. Yeah. All right. Bye, guys. Bye -bye.